Now then guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this this episode I think I'm going to make into a bit more of a jobbing episode. I've got a few little little bits and bobs to do. Um, a ball valve I think I've got to get to today. There's some TMVs, some blending valves and stuff like that. I've just literally come to get an external boiler, Worcester. I've taken it out of the box and there's no flue kit with it. So my day's already got off to a terrible, terrible start. Again, through no fault of my own. Manufacturer's not checking stuff. It does, it's honestly beginning to grind me down. The amount of problems that I'm getting through no fault of my own. And like, oh yeah, we'll get your fluke it out, you know, tomorrow. I'm here today for in a boiler. What does it to me tomorrow? Now it means I've got to come back to this job tomorrow. I'm not going to turn this video into a rant because I got mo moaned at last time. I, I don't want to be negative, but it does my head in, honestly. Um, so yeah, this week, this, this, this episode's going to be a jobbing episode. I'm going to be positive and you know, enthusiastic, but sometimes it makes you wonder, doesn't it, this job. The, the effort you go to to do a job for a customer and then half your stuff's missing. It comes supposed to come inside the box. I don't know. Maybe it's just how I feel right now. But yeah, we'll stay positive. We'll keep smiling. Um, so yeah, we'll crack straight on with the video. Hopefully it'll be an interesting one. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in there. So we all the good jobs today. I've got to change these squat box. Uh, I've also got a base to go on there, but I ain't got that yet. So, not not the worst I've ever seen. Definitely a way you'd love shops. It's just a low level pan. This is an S trap one, so I just use a normal pan connector. New system, ceramic, and then just pipe it up. Service valve, bend across, whichever. Get this unscrewed quickly. New pan connector in there, hopefully it's long enough. I'll get that sorted. Beautiful. Sometimes you're looking at concrete and just put it in one. But we'll get a new pan connector set there, get the new pan set in, get it screwed down, and I'll do the system last. So in case anybody wants to use the toilet, you can still flush it with a bucket. Well, that's we just got a new low level pan. That pan connector will push straight in there. Uh, set the pan up. So the, obviously, you're determined by the depth of where your pan connector is going to sit anyway. So, the toilet will go back, and then I'll just do the system in a minute.
Sometimes a bit of grease makes them easier, but... So I'm just getting this pan sort of screwed down. And yeah, that should be all right. That should be fine. Gotta be a bit careful here. Normally you're uh... that bit. That bit. You've just got to find your roll. Easier said than done sometimes. Crack the pan, so finish it with the hand. So the pan's all secure, nice and solid. Just got the system to make. I've made the gubbins in. And then get that done. My mate's just been and put an isolation valve in here because he wanted to get the rest of the pipe work tested. We've got a lever valve there. We've just got a basin. There's another hand wash in there, and then there's just a sink. I know it's all on inch and a half waste, but we just renewed it from what it was there before. It was all just push fit sagging. So I've just been around and put that in quickly. I get this system on the wall. At least now we can use the toilet with the bucket. I don't know quite what is living in here. We've got John Paul, George and Ringo. Look at them lot. Crawling. Don't know what they are. Little bugs. So get this on and then we get in there really. I can't get the screws on them, so. Slightly for fitting a job like this, just get fitted. Should be alright. So that goes on there like that. And you know, find the hole. 
No six. Right there, I just need to work the centre of it out, but we'll just mark the top. need to measure down from the top to the bottom and then just fix them brackets on. Like normally if you try like these there's like wood there anyway. There's not wood there though. Wood there. Top definitely works. Solid. Solid. Bottom is not the great, but the top's got it good. Might see if I've got a little self tapper in the van. Pipe is going to be long enough, it's beautiful. Level it across the top, it's about perfect. Sometimes these systems a bit play on them. I'm going to see if I've got some brass screws in the van, but I'm using these plastic spacers, just clip spacers, to stop it pushing against the ceramic. So, brass screws is better, but what I'll do is just screw it up and then when I go back to the van in a minute. I'll see if I've got one. I just need to get this flush pipe going cut to length. We do push up in the side in a fair way. And we just need to gauge how far it's going to go into the back of the pan. So if we get a camera angle. So roughly there. I can always cut a little bit more off it. See if this thing cuts it. Might be a bit thick for it. This thing's okay, it's not it does cut it. Just cut clean. It's just that thick, probably a bit thicker than normal waste. 
Right, I've just shortened that down into there a little bit because I don't like them pushing in all the way up. Sometimes I do tend to put silicon on these flush pack combs as well because they can leak. But this one, because it's brand new, we'll give it a go. As I say, I'm just going to literally pull a bend down. I'll see if I've got a bent tap connector and then that'll do that and get this one all working. Right, I'm just filling it all up. What I'm going to do is go and turn the tanks off. We've just literally got the water on and the tanks, the big tanks fill in. So that, that'll be robbing all the water. I could put the low pressure in, but once them tanks are full, under normal circumstances, they're not going to use that a lot that much water. So I mean it is filling, but literally it's just, just steady. So all I do is set the water line to roughly there somewhere on this. There's no actual water line on it. Make sure we've got no leaks and that's job done. If you didn't know how to adjust these ball bars, it's just literally a case of twisting, twisting that up against the stop, and then tightening that back nut back so that fills. So I would say somewhere there's about right. My mate's been cracking on in here doing all these boosted supplies. A bit more interesting than what I've been doing, but all good. You just got to get the overflows out. We just, the spec was to do in speed fit, so duck inch speed fit across to there. And then these just feed the birds, so. Well, that just boosted it across there, running all the MDP and across there, so. Yeah, there's been quite a bit to do here, to be fair, getting all new feeds. Basically, we've repiped it all, all the way through. So, quite an interesting job, but I just came to give them a hand with the showers, to push it on a, along a little bit. Right, this job, um, ball valve split, I think. Somebody's isolated it here, but I really want to change this flexi but the main stop tap in there flat don't work so i have to turn the block off what i'll do is get everything ready put a new i know they're not the best but it'll do the job put a new one of them on turn it off and then i can get the water back on quick but it was just peeing out apparently so we'll get that sorted i'll just put a new um, 45b in but i shan't one It'd be easy enough i just gotta get the water off Check this one, turn the whole lot off. Yeah. So I'll literally knock it off for like two minutes. At least then we're working safely. Nobody's using it in any way. I'll put that back on. Get that valve swap. Get rid of that pressure. <laughs> this ball valve out. Uh, I know I've been fitting them green ones but they didn't have any ends so I'm back on the Pro 45 and it's a bit of a mess in it that so it's a bit changed.
when people are still looking more vibes in. set them to the same height as your old one so to be fair that looks looks about right we can adjust it anyway there is an easy way of doing these but I can't remember um, so that's your restriction filter thing and then a nice big washer I can't remember if we got to fit them on these or not. I'll just double check. It's a long while since I fit 45p. Um, oh, so that's only in high water pressure areas. And I don't think it's particularly high water. Should be good. Just realised you couldn't see anything what I just did. Basically all I've done is time there. I'm hoping that will go back on there like that. It's a bit tight isn't it? Nice part. It should be alright though. It's not actually kinking it, it's just a bit tight, but I think it should be alright. Yeah, I'll tighten that up. Bit of a mess in it. That's what it is. And we've just got the water back onto this. We'll make sure it all turns off. Make sure the toilet doesn't overflow inside because sometimes when flush flush washers can cause it but I think it should be good. We'll obviously set the water line to it's actually down there on these. You can see it's been getting too high. So that six litre line is there. But obviously we just adjust it on the float. Yeah like that yeah. We'll have a have a play with that. Should be good. Fill it up nicely. It's obviously switching off. It is all sorted. So you probably can't see too well, but that's dead on the line. Uh, all adjusted. No leaks anywhere. Have a good dry up. Just before I get into this job, when fixing these radiators, if you ever see any random holes in walls on my jobs, it's where it's been tested for asbestos. So what we actually do is you get a company in, chop into the wall where we're going to fix our clips. And then this is all tested so we know there's no asbestos in this wall because sometimes it can be lurking behind. So we have a proper we have a proper survey done of everything that we touch. So if we're knocking walls down or if we're uh, doing anything, you know, even like floor tiles or anything like that, we'll get everything removed properly and tested and sampled before we even start work. So I know somebody asked the question, like you've got to be careful of asbestos. Everything we do is tested before we start. So yeah, if you ever see any random holes, such as such as that, that is where it's been tested. And um, we also get like sample books and stuff as well. Yeah, ran, random holes in the building, if you look around, it's where 
so everything's been tested so we know we're good and every there was asbestos in this property before we started but everything has been removed safely by a licensed contractor I do, I do actually have my non-licensed asbestos but we just leave it to the contractors because it's just a pain in the ass there's some asbestos I can remove myself um, but it's just not worth it so we just get a licensed contractor in remove all the asbestos before we even you know touch tools so I just thought I'd point that out quickly quickly this is just another example so they'll test this this is obviously old damp proofing or something but this isn't asbestos so if that was asbestos that whole wall would have had to come off that whole wall would have had to be removed and all that lot removed or or covered over and noted obviously if you're doing anything on that wall though the whole lot would have had to come off but luckily that's not asbestos so i'm using these eph um production and trvs they're not bad they don't seem too bad you can even have your on the pro grabbers and stuff you can have your company name put on them there's a logo and stuff so i think they do the universal like base plates and stuff for the motorized valves as well so they will fit onto different brands so i've not had any problems with the eph stuff so yeah they're not badly priced either so obviously standard sort of trv and lock shield and then wheel head if you want it so all i'm going to do is literally mark the center work you know work out the brackets and then get this thing mounted and i'm using long street elbows to come get the pack open but long street elbow so it's got plenty of bite on the nut and olive so you're never going to have any problems and then all we'll do is finish it with a little pipe collar on the wall the other good thing about these eph valves is to send you uh, copper and brass olives depending on what pipe you're going on to which is really good to see it's like little bits like that that makes plumbers lives easier obviously I've, i'm not sponsored by them but i've started fitting a lot more of the eph stuff the eph controls seem really good not had any problems with anything obviously these are only trvs and lock shields so you can't really go too far wrong but they're really good value for money obviously they're stocked at my local merchants as well so there's a cheaper alternative to some of the major brands like drayton's which like I pay, I think I pay about £27 a corner for Drayton's. These are a much, much cheaper alternative. And they seem, so far, touch wood, not had any problems at all with the EPH stuff. So, yeah, I think I'll carry on specking them on some of the some of the jobs. Obviously, every job is different depending on the spec, but where you just want in a, a decent budget valve, I think they're pretty much my go-to at the minute. So there's my mate who actually first fixed these. He's not, he's not bad, but he was taught by me. And it's a good lad. Um, pipes are dead level. We have put, because these walls have been insulated out, I think we've got 75 mil uh, Kingspan on them. We have put backer boards where the brackets are going, so we should just get away with using wood screws straight in. So this is a 600 double going on. So the pipe should be at oh, about 690, so all things being equal. Yeah, about six nine five. So half of that is a oh, quick mass three, just under three fifty in it. Somewhere there. Mass was never much on Three fifty. And the centre line on. Obviously, if you're working on finished walls, you want to keep your pencil lines behind the radiators into a minimum. And then all we'll do is measure on the radiator where the brackets go and work out the height and get the thing screwed on the wall easy as that and then take that off carefully i don't think it's pressurized or what is it yeah we'll have to drop the pressure off and then just get these valves connected i've just opened the drain off downstairs so probably get rid of all this he says in a minute I'll let that drain a bit more really impatient what I generally do, mark the centre of my radiator with a tiny pencil line, then we'll stand that up against the wall on our centre line, which is there, and then we just mark the centre of the bracket. Saves me doing any, saves me doing any measuring. So there and there. So centre line, bracket, bracket, and then we just work out the height then. Just say so, I find it just saves measuring measuring the brackets in that one. Because I'm holding up 
that for the numbers and remembering stuff. So that way, that way you can't get it wrong. Normally they're like 180. That's where the brackets want to be anyway. And then I've got a measurement from the centre of my centre of where it goes into the radiator to the bottom of the bracket, line across, and that'd be perfect. Obviously that obviously that will need shortening back, but I'll do that in a second, that'd be that'd be over there. Just with them long M and Fs, it gives plenty for the uh, not knowledge to sit. So that'd be perfect. And as I say, pipe collar on the wall, and that'll just be decorated, and it'll look perfect. Alright, this is the bit where you just have to be a bit careful measuring. So all I generally do is measure from the centre of my tail to the floor, and then from the bottom of the bracket, where it sits on, and then like that to the floor, and then deduct the 25 from there. So, that'll be the 25 down, and then 95 up. And once you work out, from the centre of your pipe to the bottom of your bracket, that'll be the same on all your radiators. So whatever that measurement is, I don't actually know what it is, but whatever that is, write that down somewhere and that'll be the same on the rest of your radiators in the house. Once you know this one's right, so 65 mil from the centre of the pipe to the bottom of the bracket, that's the same on all. So one bracket there, one bracket there, and that radiator will hang nicely. So now we've got my bracket on the shorter set in. And it wants to be in there somewhere. And let's be honest, the screws on each table are pretty good. So if I can get them open. This thing's like a long threaded screw all the way down. It's like a two and a half, ten, and a washer. So hopefully, if we've got the first fix right, this will just go in there. There should be wood there. He says, there's not a lot there. You can always pop a couple of extra screws in. I'm sure there was wood, it's supposed to be. Mm, might be. That was my mate, that is. I think there is wood there. I think that should be fine. Obviously, you want really good fixings on your radiator. You cannot afford them being pulled off. But because there's 75mm insulation, I don't think it'll have gripped at all. So we'll, we'll make sure it's good and then get the other one on and we can hang the radiator. Right, don't forget to put your plastic spacers on. Just stops the radiator from creaking. So these ones are nice and simply set. So you can't get them. Typical. Typical. But they go on there like that. Um, we'll hang the radiator, clean it up, pipe that up, job done. So the thing's all on. We've got a little bit of slide on our brackets if we need it. Um, check to make sure the radiator's level for a start, if anything. Some of these grills are a bit longer than I'm not blaming the radiator because it might be me. Really want the long radiator level across it, that's not bad. That perfect, I would say. Sometimes it's better just to be honest with you, stand back and have a look, see what it looks like with the window board. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, so, I locked out the valves in, locked out the tails in. I still use locked out 55. I know some. Some people use that um, blue, whatever it is, uh, rapid blue. I mean, I stick to locks out 55, never had a problem. Why well, change something, put it in the book, and then literally, it'll just be a case of cutting that off, soldering that on, job done. And I think I've got four more upstairs or five more. Not too sure, but they're all the same. So that tail in there like that, excuse fingers, and then just a spanner on the Tail. Obviously, I know the other week on a radiator when I was unblocking the microball, I used some grips. 
but that was only because the valves were already scratched off to high hell. And so I wouldn't recommend using grips on brand new on brand new stuff. So just take your time and try not to scratch anything up. It should be fine. So that will never leak. I can absolutely guarantee you that won't leak. And then we well, get will just come this way. Oops, oops. Touch, touch an elephant. Touch an elephant. And then that will go there like perfect. All we do is mark that way is mark this dead centre. Let's be cut off about there. Santa will probably give me some new cutters this year, seeing as they've done well. Obviously, I'll clean that up. But get the idea. Mm, might be a touch. Might be a touch long on my tail. I can shorten that down if I need to. A bit. But it still have plenty, plenty of depth. So I'll probably just shorten that down a touch. And it'd be perfect. I probably should have hung the radiator at five mil higher. But the next one I will, you'll never know. You'll never know. That'll be fine. I literally just cut that amount off. And it's perfect. Uh, radiator might just want knocking that away, but we've got a slide on the bracket. I'll get the clean up, get that soldered up, and then say it's the same on them all, and they'll all look fairly decent, like the floating skating board will just come underneath. Yeah, neat, nice, neat job in my opinion. So yeah, I'll get that soldered up and get the rest of them went around. They'll probably take me about half an hour radiator. So we'll get these done today and that'll be my day done. Pipe's nice and shiny. I'll solder it up with the valve out of position. Don't need a lot of flux. Tiny little bit of flux on there. Perfect, that's the one I cut down. Perfect. You don't need a lot of heat. Trying not to burn the side of the radiator. You literally only need a tiny flame. He still makes a mess of it. I soldered them with a the valve out of position. It looked fine once it's decorated. Um, I'll give that a clean off and that's it. I'm probably not going to film it anymore. Just purely because you've probably seen enough. Obviously, I jet blew that on, turned that off, so we'll probably say goodbye at this point. And we are still smiling, just about. That it's been. I've enjoyed today really. Got off to a bit of a bad start, just with not having the boiler fluid and stuff like that. I was only there to really to give my mate a lift in with that boiler anyway, just because they are heavy them externals. But it'd have been nice because he's not got his off tech just to show him, you know, how to fit the fluid and stuff. But it's not. Not the end of the world, I've been off and done a few of the jobs and say so just finish, finish not, finishing off here. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash the like button. If you're new, subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video, hit the dislike button. And we'll see, see you all next week. I'm not exactly sure what will be in the next episode. I'm doing, I'm fitting a boiler tomorrow. Um, got a few interesting, well, I say interesting, depends, depends on your point of view, I suppose. A um, few bits and bobs coming up. We're super busy. I just need to be here, there and everywhere. Hopefully by the end of next week, um things will be looking a bit clearer i'm just under pressure on a few jobs just literally i know from the christmas deadline everybody goes on about the christmas deadline it just keeps pushing closer and closer now and they were only in november but literally my diary is literally full i think week commencing the 18th is it 17th 18th that week's completely full already because that's the kids holidays 
So I'm literally booked up. So it's one less week. I work right till the, to the 23rd, which is the Friday. So running out of weeks really to get to get work booked in. But it's good to be busy. Next year is looking incredibly busy already. Um, diary for January is looking pretty full already. So it's really good. But again, you know, you can only do so much. And you get these emergency call outs and stuff. And you, you obviously got to get to you've got to get to me if they're good customers and you do a lot of work so yeah we, we jiggle things around we juggle things and we get things sorted so yeah thank you for watching see you all next week